Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series Week 23. This is a phenomenal case. So we have here a radiograph of the right ankle slash foot and a corresponding sagittal T2 fat sat MR image on the same patient at literally the exact same time on the same day, okay? And take a look at these images. I know there's, there's a plain film here, there's an MRI. Uh, there are obvious and more subtle findings on both of these. And the question that I have for you guys is, what risk factor is closely linked to the diagnosis shown? Is it male sex, thin stature, tight fitted shoes, or flat foot deformity? What risk factor is closely linked to the diagnosis shown? And I wanna come back to the images here. So on the X-ray, what we're noticing here, first of all, there's no fracture or dislocation. Of course, this is a lateral view where we have, this is the tibia, this is the fibula, this is the talus, this is the calcaneus. Uh, and I wanna focus here at the ankle because notice that we do have an enthesophyte along the posterior calcaneus where the Achilles tendon inserts, but more you know, superiorly here along the posterior superior Calcaneus, there's a focal spike or an osteophyte or an osseous protuberance here. So that's important, okay? That's an important finding that we're seeing in this case. We also have some thickening of the distal Achilles tendon, right? Because the Achilles tendon inserts onto the calcaneal tuberosity here. Notice that it's, it appears to be very prominent. So this distal Achilles tendon appears somewhat thickened and there's some soft tissue fullness and prominence adjacent to the Achilles tendon. And finally, if you look at this space here is known as Kager's fat pad. This space here, you know, deep to the Achilles tendon and posterior to the posterior process of the talus. This area here is known as Kager's fat pad. But instead of it being dark and composed of fatty tissue like we see here, there's some soft tissue density in Kager's fat pad, okay? So, and if we take a look at the MRI, there's a little bit of bone marrow edema in the calcaneal tuberosity. We again see this spike or osseous protuberance along the posterior superior calcaneus. We see some thickening of the distal Achilles tendon with intermediate signal consistent with Achilles tendinopathy. So there's some Achilles tendinopathy here. You can often measure the AP dimension. If it measures more than eight millimeters, that's suggestive of Achilles tendinopathy. But in this case, we have you know, a convex contour of the anterior margin of the Achilles tendon, that can be suggestive of tendinopathy. There's some intermediate signal here. There's no fluid signal within the tendon itself to suggest a tear, but there is some tendinopathy. And then within Kager's fat pad, we have this, you know, heterogeneous T2 bright signal within Kager's fat pad. The retrocalcinea bursa is a potential space here. And here we have evidence of retrocalcinea bursitis, or we have fluid accumulating you know, in this Kager's fat pad or this retrocalcaneal bursa. Now, a fluid accumulated here, superficial to the Achilles tendon, we call that the pre-Achilles bursitis, right? This, this area would be pre-Achilles bursitis, but here, this is retrocalcaneal bursitis. And we have this prominence or osseous protuberance along the posterior superior calcaneus. This is known as the Haglund deformity, right? But we have three findings here. We have the Haglund deformity, we have retrocalcaneal bursitis, and we have distal Achilles tendinopathy. And you can appreciate that on the X-ray here as well. If you're astute, you have the Haglund deformity here with a prominent posterior superior process of the calcaneus. You have distal Achilles tendinopathy with thickening of the distal Achilles tendon. And you have soft tissue density uh, replacing the normal fat in Kager's fat pad, suggesting the possibility of retinal calcaneal bursitis. So this triad of findings of distal Achilles tendinopathy retrocalcaneal bursitis and the Haglund deformity is known as the Haglund syndrome, okay? So the risk factor that's closely linked to the Haglund syndrome is of course, tight fitted shoes or high heeled shoes, right? This is the major risk factor that's linked with the Haglund syndrome. This is of course more common in females, not males, and typically obese individuals have get Haglund syndrome more commonly in those that are thin. So the Haglund syndrome usually presents with pain with plantar flexion at the level of the ankle. There's often pain at the calcaneal tuberosity along that posterior superior calcaneus where that haggling deformity is. There can sometimes be redness, erythema. There can be soft tissue prominence at that site as well. The risk factors, as I said, are female sex, you know, patients that are overweight and those that wear tight fitted shoes are often high heel shoes. And often if the patient stops wearing high heel shoes, the Haglund syndrome often gets much better. So the, the three findings associated with the Haglund syndrome are the Haglund deformity, which is a prominent posterior superior margin of the calcaneus, retrocalcaneal bursitis, and of course, Achilles tendinopathy. Patients can have the Haglund deformity without having the Haglund syndrome. So you really need to have 
all three findings to suggest Haglin syndrome. The treatment often includes just shoe modification. You tell the patient to wear flats, stop wearing high heels. Often the retrocalcular bursitis and the Achilles tendinopathy tend to you know, get much better. They may still have the Haglin deformity, but often the symptoms get better. We can also inject steroid into the retrocalcaneal bursa that can reduce the inflammation in that area and that can be a temporary uh, solution. But you know, if it gets very severe, they often have to excise the haggling deformity or kind of shave off that prominence along the posterior superior margin of the calcaneus, kind of flatten it out, and then everything uh, theoretically gets better, including the retrocalcaneal bursitis and the Achilles tendinopathy. So this is a nice case of the Haglund syndrome. Hope that was helpful. Tune in next week for another super high yield MSK case. Thank you so much for your attention.